Devil's advocate. Do you know what that means, devil's advocate? Yeah. So we're going to pretend that we're coming from another side. And we're going to pretend, to the point of the discussion tonight, that this whole thing is a hoax. All right. That's where we're going to start from that premise. I not understand. The whole thing is a hoax. The whole thing is a fabrication. And so we're going to discuss from two angles. One angle would be the historical angle whether one can get away with such a theory. And the other one is, I'd like to share with you a few psikim, hardly more than a pusik. Efsha one Rashi, that's all, to show you how we can clearly see in the actual wording, in this famous document, there's only one way of making sense of it. Before I start, though, let me just put, press record. That's a great idea. Okay, so let's begin again. So we have two approaches tonight. One approach is, how are we sure that the story that we were all told is a true story? How do we know that the story is not made up? It's so long ago, it's 3,000, 3, sorry, 3,323 years, is that right? Mm -hmm. Since Matan Torah, yeah? So, you know, we're sitting here today in modern day America, we'd like to be sure that the story that we were told from earliest childhood is a true story. Then we need to know that the material in here really is what we were told it is. It's not a committee who made it up. It's not some genius who wrote it. The attack comes straight from there. Which is a very unusual thing, because how many books were reached us that way? And so we're taking nothing for granted. We're going to explore it, and you're welcome to ask your questions. So I'd like to start you off on my favorite, absolute favorite piece. I would strongly urge everybody to use a chemish, because that way it really comes to life. And I can only tell you, I've done this at Shabbatons, I've done it in Boston, I've done it all over the place, I've done it in England. I would do this piece anywhere, whether it's Shabbos, Pashas, Bresthanon, or the middle of the week, or the middle of the winter, it doesn't bother me, because I feel this is a very beautiful, and, and, much more important than beautiful, compelling piece to start with. Page? 445, and it's Devorim Dalad, Posek Lamed Beis. Yeah, everybody welcome. Everybody welcome to join us. And to take a chemish as well. Here's an analysis of Siddha. Have you got that? Yeah. 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 I'm not giving a she in the normal sense of that, but just for the sake of clarity and for the sake of seeing for yourself, it's going to make a huge difference if you have a chemish to look inside. Okay? Is that a deal? We have plenty, bro. Yeah. Okay, so 445, I guess we all have the same print, yeah? yeah. 445, and it's Dvorim Dalad, and it's Pasuk Lamad Base. I will tell you, some lectures end with this piece, but I would like to start with it, and you'll see why. Kisha'al no liyomim rishayim. You might inquire, you might go back in history, and you might want to ask a question, which I have a suspicion that some people are scared to ask. But Moshe Rabbein is telling us to ask it. How's that? Yeah? Yeah. He was obviously a very tolerant, open-minded individual, as you will see now. Before your time, you want to dig into history, you want to check up that our story is real, that our story is genuine, and that it's the only story of its like, of its type on the planet. Yeah? Okay. So, From the very day of the creation of Udam Arishan, the very first Erev Shabbos of history, the first tribe that ever was, till today, not till 2448, not till 2488, but till 5771 and beyond. Okay, how's that? So you want to know also from one end of the earth to the other. What do you want to know then? What is it? So you want to know, was there ever an event, anything like the event that Moshe Rabbeinu is going to describe in a moment, next Pusik, yeah? Now before we go any further, and we're not even doing any Rashi here or any Mefarish of any sort, if you would come in just with a plain Chemish, it would be good enough. So I want to just point out to you two things. Does it not sound a bit repetitive? Look, number one, 
Oi Hanishma Kumoi number two. It's pretty well the same thing, but I would like to share with you, Rabbi, that's not the same thing at all. But I want to point out something else to you, and that is, it says Kisha Al No. What does the word No mean? Please, 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 please ask. In other words, don't you dare ask any questions. That's not what we're saying. Please ask. And ask a question which spans history from the very first day of creation till the day that you ask it, and planet Earth from one end to the other. Total question. What is the question? I'll tell you. Pasuk Lamed Gimel. Yeah? We all get a chemish, I hope. Because mm-hmm. even if you got your... Um, what do you call them? Mm-hmm. Huh? The... the uh, but it's not chomet, so it goes yeah, into the chemish, yeah, it doesn't matter. Because I think you'll see, if you look into a chemish, it'll make a huge difference tonight. So I can only urge you, all the psikim we look at, please look inside for your own benefit. It doesn't help me, but I think it'll help you. Okay. Hashoma om koilelekim medaba mitoichu aish kasha shomato ato Was there ever a story recorded in human history that an entire nation, an entire nation, millions of people, heard Hashem speak to them from the fire as you did, which is actually the door of the generation before, but they heard all this direct from all their parents, as you did, effectively it's you, because you heard it live in such a compelling way, it's as good as though you were there in person, Vayechi, and survive to tell the tale. That's one question. That's question Aleph. Question base is a question referring to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and that is, Some of you may recognize the Pusuk from the Buddha. Was there ever a story similar to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, that Hashem Yitzhiyas took one nation out of the other nation, out of the whole country, but how? The Masois, the Oisois, the Moivsim, the the whole spiel, the Chazuka, the Zrainatiyah, the Maruim Gedoylem. And what about this story? Kechoyl Asher Usar Shlechem Hashem Lekaychem, the Mitzrayim Leinecha. You saw this. Whether it was you or your parents, it's live, it's recent. And therefore, this is a story that's fresh in everybody's mind. Please tell me, is there any similar story recorded any time, any place? Now, no, Rabbi, so before we go any further, I don't, know what, I don't know you at all, and I don't know what you've read and what you've heard, and any research that you may have done on other religions, yeah? But do you know, you probably do know, that every other religion in the world started more or less as follows. One person came forward and told over a story of a vision or a dream or a so-called prophecy and the stories all are by their very nature uncheckable. There's no way of checking. Like if I would tell you what I dreamt last night, you don't know me, we've never met, there's no reason on earth you should believe me. Unless you think that Rabbi Ratna brings only, only genuine guests into this Moisev, so maybe you would give me the benefit of the doubt. But as such, there's no reason on earth you should take me seriously. So all the other religions in the world, I have to tell you, are based on one man's claim, an uncheckable claim, and it's outside the scope of our discussion, well, if you want to, we could include it later, how they succeeded. But one thing is for sure, that there's nobody else who has a story like ours. Correct? Nobody else has come along with a story that Hashem Yisbarach spoke to a gathering of three million people, who then passed it on to their children and passed it on generation after generation, Rebbe to Talmud, father to son, till it reached us. And that's the one and only way that you can explain a phenomenon that we face, that whether it's in Williamsburg, whether it's in Muncie, whether it's in Barakab, whether it is in England, whether it is in France, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, Eretz HaKodesh, or any place you may travel, where there are Yidin like us, they have the same Chemish, the same Sefer Torah letter by letter, the same practices, the same tomorrow night celebrate Hanukkah, the same Shabbos, the same Yom Tov, even between Ashkenazim, the Sfaradim, the Chesidim, the Misnagdim, it's pretty well the same. There's a few detailed differences which are not important, but the Yesodists, the fundamentals are the same. It all gets traced back to Sina. But note the striking difference here between us and them. Moshe Rabbein is saying, well, maybe you should trust me. You know me for 40 years or more. 
I've been your loyal shepherd. I've been my senefesh for you. I've been with you through thick and thin. I think by now, if I tell you something, you can take it as read, you can take it as reliable. He doesn't say that. So Kishalno, please, do your research. Jump on a plane and travel to the other end of the universe. Go to libraries and check out records. Go to professors of history and ask them and satisfy yourself. And find out, Aleph, was there ever an event anything like Matan Torah? And guess what the answer will be without doubt? No. Nobody else can come up with such a story. It's a good story, mind you. I wonder why nobody else tried that. Would anybody here like to start a religion? It's a great idea, isn't it? You get a big following, you get famous, you get power, you manipulate people, you might get money out of them. Why should we start a religion? So if we want to start a religion, why do we have to do such a pathetic approach as to say, okay, I had a dream last night and Hashem Yisbar spoke to me and this is what he told me, and nobody can really be sure that it's true. Why don't we start off with such a story like this? Wouldn't it be a bit more solid, a bit more reliable? Wouldn't people take it a bit more seriously? Okay, so I want to show you something. What did we notice? We noticed there seemed to be a repetition. Look at the last two words on page 445. Haniyo kadovo hagudel hazeh, and on top of four four six, that is, was there ever in truth be'emes this is amul gavein azamasa? That's number one, and you and I and everybody else out there knows that there wasn't. Oy hanishma kumoy, was there ever a rumor spread by a faker to tell such a story in order to start a new religion? And maybe you heard that rumor, and guess what? Anybody hands up? Anybody who's done a bit of broader study? Come across such a story from another religion? Mishtu Azans. Why not? Why did nobody have the intelligence? Why did they build it on such shaky foundations? On one individual's claim which there's no way you can check out? Instead of a story something like ours. Okay, let me show you something. Imagine that this whole thing is somebody's invention. And it came into being as follows. In the Middle Ages, a man appeared on the scene and he says, Hey Jewish people, I've got news for you. There's a long forgotten tradition which I have, which you don't know. And we're actually a very special nation and we have an illustrious history. The only thing is it's been forgotten for 500 years. And I'm here to bring it all back to you. And here's the book. What do they say to him? Can I ask everybody, what do they say to this fellow? Get a life. Huh? Get a life. Right. In other words, what are you telling us? Nobody else knows it. How come you are privy to this secret? Device there's a kind of vice which nobody ever told me. It's not recorded anywhere. Uh, there's no reason on earth I should take it seriously. So this shows it's virtually impossible, and there's many other ways of proving it, to start a rumor. You could start a rumor about a story maximum the size of this group of shows. And maybe, maybe if the story is interesting enough, people would buy it. And maybe even it would go down in history. But a story of three million people, you cannot fake it. You cannot fake it. It's got to be recorded. It's got to be known. There's no way somebody can come along in the middle of the time and just invent it. So listen to this. Maybe there's some truth in saying, Haniyo Kadova Godlaze, a real one. Or Yanish Makamai, whatever, a fake one. Now let me ask you something else. Everybody here was educated. There's a lot of educated people out there, Afil al Goyim, who had an education. They've all heard of Avram Avinu Emes. They've all heard of Yitzchak V'yakot. They've all heard of Moshe V'aaron. They've all heard of any famous personality in Jewish history who made a contribution to our heritage, to our culture, to what we have learned, to our foreign, whether it is a Bible of them. Whether it's Rabbi Hidanus, going back a little bit further. Whether it is the Vilna Gunnar, it's the Baal Shem Tov. All these names are very famous. Whether it's some Seifer or even Maurice and Chavitz Chaim. These names are household names, right? Agreed? Any person who's done a bit of general knowledge, a bit of general study, has heard of these names. So let me ask you a question. How can it be that somebody came, let's assume again the Middle Ages, and said, my friends, you're missing your heritage. And I want to bring it back to you. And here is the book. 
And he must change the face of world jewelry. And everybody started keeping Shabbos. And everybody started eating kosher. And everybody started teaching this to their children. And their whole lives were changed around. And it made a revolution, a global revolution in the Jewish nation. And it's not recorded anywhere. And nobody's heard of it. Is that possible? It's not possible. So there's only one option, and that is to say that, guess what, our story is true. You cannot start such a rumor and successfully have it spread across generations and across the planet. It's not going to work. Please, Rabbi Sir, go and try it. Try it tonight on your way home or try it tomorrow morning at work. Yeah? So therefore, what is Moshe Rabbeinu saying? I'm 1,000% confident. I'm putting a challenge to you. You know, if you don't want to ask, it's fine. If you have straightforward eminence, so I'm happy with you. But you know, I'm equally content and confident if you want to go out there. Because you know what? A minna is not because somebody told me. I've got to be convinced myself that it makes sense. This is part of our program which I'm going to show you, Mitzvah Hashem. And I've brought you a few bargains, especially arranged for tonight. No jokes. So you will see that real a has got to be our own. Your tati yat gezukt and your mami yat gezukt and the rebbe yat That's a very good beginning. But later, we have to have it as our own acquiring, our own acquisition. And one of the ways is we look carefully at Psikin like this. And you can see Moshe Rabbeinu's attitude. He could so easily have said, Moshe Rabbeinu, I think by now you can take my word for it. It's amazing that the speech at the end of his life, he is offering them the challenge, go out there and satisfy yourselves. You like this one? I think it's incredible. Okay, so what I want to do with you tonight is to share with you different kinds of indications, not only the story that we have is endless, and cannot be anything but the endless, and you can please make your comments and observations as well. I want to show you various places in Chimish where there's only one way of understanding it. If it would be a committee who put this document together, forgive me, they made a very bad job. If it's Mina Shemaim, it's perfect. But if it's human-made, they're crazy. Please, don't get shocked from me saying that. So let me show you some examples. Let's turn Rabbi Yisrael to Pashas Bahar. Okay, I'll tell you a page number if it makes you happy. So you want to turn to page 3, 1, hold on. Um, yes, it's 313. And there you find Kapitel Chafei Posuk Chaf. And again, I urge everybody to have a finish. It will make a very big difference. And I think you're going to go away from here tonight thinking maybe a bit differently than you thought till now. So, they've just been presented a very difficult mitzvah. Rabbi said, if I was starting a new religion, I wouldn't dream of offering them a mitzvah like this. It would be ridiculous. Nobody would want it. Mitzvah Shmita requires Mesiris Nefesh. Well, we're going to starve a year. Would anybody like to just leave work for a year? Just not do anything. No established for Panos at all. You'll be okay. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Well, if I would say that to you, what would you say to me? Not. Right. Thank you. That would be the nice way of saying it. <laughs> right. Okay. That's because you're such a nice man. But my, well, never mind. Yeah, they don't even want to tell me what they say to me. Okay. So, the, this mitzvah, so naturally, the chisom manoich ba'shon ha'shvi, if you're going to say, Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, what are we going to eat in this Shnas Hashmita? We may do no work on the fields. We're an agricultural society. How are we going to survive? And Mr. Essen, and this is not enough, you know, by a few of these. Uh, uh, yeah, so therefore, you know, we need a, a bit of bread and a bit of, a bit of meir. Hey, lo nizra, lo nizra, it's to be assigned. We can't sow, we can't reap, we can't gather in, we can't work the land, we can gunish team. So, how are we going to make it? Don't worry, it will be fine. There'll be a brocha in the crop the previous year, the sixth year of the Shemitah cycle, 313 of the Shemitah cycle. And the Shnunah Shishis will provide for three years, for the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth, which is already the first year of the next cycle, because this Kim denied via. Look at Pesachov base. Ad hashuna she is at the end there. Ad boy to the use of toichel yushan. It's not essen the altar until the new crop comes. It's going to be well into the eighth year, right? And hands up those who'd be able to make such a promise and deliver. Is there anyone on planet Earth who could make such a promise and carry it out eternally, forever? 
Now, do you follow the news, what goes on, let's say, in Eretz Yisrael, the recent Shemitah? You see a beautiful picture, of banana plantation. One was people who did not keep Shemitah, they worked the land, they irrigated, they put fertilizer, everything, disaster crop. And another, a farm of Shemesh Shviz, I've never seen bananas looking so beautiful as that. You know, green and ripening to yellow and so rich and so large, it, it, it looked like a legend, yeah? So, who can make this promise? Now, if I was starting a new religion and I'd make this promise, I should be locked up in some institution with big double doors, shouldn't I? Right? I mean, and, and who's going to buy it? Would a single person in his right mind accept it? So, what could, what's the only way of understanding such a pussy? There's only one way. Do you agree, Rabbi Sai? There's only one way of making sense of such a pussy. If it was a committee who hid it in some basement and hatched a plot, and then, it, here's the book. They must be well, nuts, to quote the experts here. Yeah. must be nuts. Okay, let's bring you another one which is a bit similar, but I've got quite a variety for you tonight. Let's turn to Shmois Lamadalad Chof Gimel. Shmois Lamadalad Chof Gimel. It's in Kisisa, and it would be page 218, I think. Is it? Lamadalad, mm-hmm. no, I'm yeah, sorry, no, no, it's a bit later. Sorry, 219, 219. So let's look at the Now everybody knows him as this bandab and misof yon tif shulosh Okay. Right, we go Aliel Regal, beautiful Bisman Shabismidish Kayam, Magai Tarov Kerishalayim, Pesach Shvias and Sikhs. Beautiful. Ki Oirish Koyimi Pronecho, Rechavis Kabelecho, Velo Yachmoid Ishes Artsacho, Balois Valerus and Pene Hashem and the Kaycha Shulosh Pumim Bashar. Here is the problem. I want to go Ali El Regal, I'll take with my big strong sons, I leave behind my wife, defenseless, right? My little daughters, <coughs> even weaker, they're all vulnerable. Who's at home? The women and the children, the little children, right? And the neighbors know it's not a secret. It's public knowledge. We make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So all the Arabs in all the surrounding countries, and don't think that this man by Yisheni, Eretz Yisrael was ruled by our friends. And don't think that the neighboring countries were our friends, right? So the easiest thing for them to do is, guess what? Ha-ha, all the men have gone now. Let's have some fun. Let's go to their houses, let's go to their fields, let's plunder, let's steal, let's kill, yeah? No, don't worry about it, because nobody will be jealous, and nobody will come and they leave you in peace. Again, wherever a boy's side, who is able to make such a promise? Anyone? Hands up? No, not even the American government. Right. So therefore, let me ask you, on the Schmitter one, how long would this new religion have lasted? Maximum? Six years. Six years. On this one, how long would it last? Maximum? Only a few months. A few months. Between one year to the next. So if it says in here, for once again, there's only two possibilities. Either the fellow who wrote this, forgive me, but absolutely crazy, out of his mind, and his religion would have died on the day it was born, or it's what you and I know it really is. There's only, only those two options, right? There is no middle ground, right? Okay, let's have a look at a completely different one. Let's turn now. We're going to be turning a lot of pages tonight because we can't go this in order of the Psikim. So now we need to turn to Vayikra. It's Shmini. It's Kapitel Yud Aleph. And it's Pusik Dalet. This is a very favorite one. So if there is a Gemara Chilin here, it would be useful. But if not, it doesn't matter. Do you have a Gemara Chilin handy, maybe? And this talks about kashras, it talks about the minim that we can eat with mekanyos and with mekanishas. Now, if I would say the following, I say to you, Merev Rabbi Isai, this koilal here, if you want to join, there's two conditions. One condition is you must be over 18, and the other condition is you have to like sunflower seeds. Okay? If you're 90, but you don't like sunflower seeds, you're disqualified. If you love sunflower seeds, but you're only 15, you can't come. You don't need to be a genius to realize that both conditions must be fulfilled. If we're not fulfilling both, then we cannot attend the kolo, right? Is that fair? 
Right, so we don't need to spend loads and loads of time explaining, yeah, but you're only 15, or you don't like sunflower seed, so therefore you can't come. Once I've given the rule, it's ever so simple, everybody understands it, and you also realize the Torah does not waste words, let alone seek and shkoya, fitl and mitzvahs, and therefore if the Torah has given us the basic principle already one time, that should be enough for anybody who's not retarded to understand, okay, so I know now what the rule is, and in this particular situation, I know what which animals we can eat and which animals we can't. So let me show you simply the Psikim again. No Mefarish, no Rashi, nothing extra, just Vesishtait and Gav, the actual Psikim. So we turn to Pusikim, right? That's Kapitul Gid, page 271. 271, those who prefer to find it that way. Koyma Fresis Parasa Shesashe Saprusois, number one. One condition, it must be. Mafresis parsa. So the animal, the hooves must be split. That's one condition. That's only enough. Ma'ala skayre babahimot. Then oisotachai. This makes an So it's got to be that it fulfills both conditions, right? Now, boy, so it's simple as anything can be. Nothing complicated. Then you've got a list. Look, pusik dalad rabbi say, hey, vov, and zayin. Can you please explain to me why we need them? Please have a look at them. Look at hey, vov, Zion. So, so Dalit, Hevel, and Zion. You have here four exceptions. Three of them, what does it say about them? Right. The Pharisee, Ainani Mafris. And again, the Shofar, and again, the Anavis. And then, of course, you have the infamous Chaz in his Faket, the Kusha Chaz of Fisur. So he is Mafris Pharisee, but Gaidolo Yiko. Do you agree, Rabbi Sai, if we're basic common sense, we could have worked this out on our own? Elamai, guess what? These are the only four creatures on our earth that only fulfill one condition. There are no others. Now, let me ask you a question. If Moshe Rabbeinu started a new religion on his own, or if this document was put together by a committee, do you not agree? It's for sure an ancient document. It's a very risky thing to say. Because you could make a statement like that, and you could be transparent in no time. Because a zoologist will come up and he will say, Hey, I know a few more animals that are either Malegeira, Parasena, and Mafris, or the other way around, and therefore I proved you a faker. And the Gemara says this. The Gemara says, I'll tell you it in my words. You know what a Range Rover is? Yeah. No, you know the Range Rover. Do you drive one as well? Yeah. It's the one thing you're missing. Everything else you have. Right. Okay, so, because I come from England, that's where they were made. It's, it's, that's a decent country, that's why they're not Range Rovers. So, was Moshe Rabbeinu a hunter who drove around the safaris of South Africa in a Range Rover with binoculars and watching out for all the wild animals? I somehow think he wasn't, and the Gemara tells us here he wasn't. So the Gemara says that Mikan, from here we learn that the an answer to those who say that uh, the Torah is not Minashamai, because there's only one way of making sense of this person, and it is because the Torah wants to show us this is the Emmas coming from the Creator Himself. And therefore, he knows all the species of animals that exist. And he's the one and only, you could have said in the year 2448, valid still in the year 5771, that there are only these four and none others, and safely make that statement over 3,300 years ago, and nobody's been able to come and disprove it. Isn't that amazing? So therefore, anybody else who'd make such a statement, wouldn't they be running a big risk? Don't say it. Leave it out. You've given us the rule. We know the rule. We're not that thick. We can work out that the other ones, whether it's the Gomol, the Shofan, the Arnevis, and the Chazet, they're not going to be kosher. And the night is psychically rich Right. To show us, Moira Vrabo's side, there's only one way of making sense of this document. Yeah? Again. Right. By the way, do you know, Rabbi Isai, how many species of mammal are now known? And there were many more discovered since Moshe Rabbeinu's time. We have a lot more information. That's not because it's to say a lot more of such information is available today. So today we know of well over 5,000. I'm not talking about fish or birds or reptiles, just the mammals. Well over 5,000. 
Mammoths. 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 Mammoths, right? Okay, so, and I don't know how many were known Bisman of Moshe Rabbeinu. Mammoths are translated into Bahamas? Yes, Bahamas and Chayas. Right, okay. So we're excluding fish, reptiles, birds, yeah, okay. So for sure there were far, far fewer known in those days. So again, making such a statement is a very dangerous thing to do for a human being. Because it could very quickly become transparent, especially today when science has become so sophisticated and we have information which you can now get in seconds, mamish, information overload, and it's still valid, every word of it. Let's move on to another one, okay? So we've done this one. Now, let me show you, we're still in Vayikra, Kapitel Chafov Pusik Mendalit. You never learn so much Chemish in one night. I'm not joking. Wherever you were, Nishkatele. Chofov Posit Mem Dalit. Rabbi, so we got a lot of friends or we got more enemies? What have we got more of? I think you all know. You are. Yeah, I think so somehow. And if you learn a bit of Jewish history, wow, it's just the most unbelievable story that there is. So look at the promise made over here in Pusik Mem Dalit. The Afghan Zoys, Mazuk is crowded by the Slichos. We're scattered in the lands of our enemies, and I don't even mean America and England now. Yidin lived in Germany. Yidin lived in Poland. Yidin lived in Romania. Yidin lived in Yemen, and the last few are probably still there, but many of you in Portugal. Right, the list is virtually endless, yeah? The lands of our enemies who would love to do away with us, and no Trabboi site, coming to Hanukkah tomorrow. The Yavonim were much more powerful than us. The Romans were much more powerful than us. All these Chavra, there's no match, there's no comparison, right? And yet, I have never rejected them and despised them to let them be destroyed. Right? They all easily could have got rid of us. Hitler, Yimach Shomer was determined to wipe us off the face of the earth and to tell the world about the extinct Jewish race. And some say it's a bit controversial that in Prague, where there are a lot of Jewish artifacts collected in some of the shuls I've been to many times, that this was supposed to be a museum that he wanted to make. Not everybody agrees on this, but some maintain he wanted to make museums to show the world Sifre Torah and Menorahs and Bechers and Talaisim and Devais Vus. These were the things used by the religion that no longer exists. He is gone and we Baruch Hashem are here. So what should I do? Lechaloisim, I will not destroy them. Who on earth can make such a promise to a tiny race forever persecuted, forever outnumbered. We have virtually no muscle of our own. The nations who've tried to wipe us out could easily have done so. And here it says, no, 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 they'll never make it. They can chop off a piece here, they can chop off a piece there, but they'll never win. You want to hear the story for this? Okay, there's a story to go with it. <coughs> so, in the early years of the war, he was once not feeling well, and he went to see a doctor, this doctor was an elderly Romanian and happened to be an intelligent man and realized that his client sitting in his office was highly <coughs> intelligent. He said, Rabbi, I want to ask you a question. You can see what's happening here in Europe and you can see that the Nazis are gathering power and you can see what their plans are. I want to ask you, tell me, what do you think is going to be the fate of your people? It seems pretty precarious. I mean, pretty dangerous. It doesn't look as though they've got a future. So the Cosmic Group thought for a moment and he said to the doctor he said doctor I'm telling you we will survive and Hitler's footsteps will disappear from the earth he said Rabbi I know you're a brilliant man but are you a prophet he said no, no I'm not a prophet I want to ask you a question doctor what do you reckon do you reckon the sun will come up tomorrow morning so the doctor says yes do you know what time the doctor tells him what time he said doctor are you a prophet so how do you know that it hasn't happened yet so the doctor said, because the record of history that I know, that I heard from my father, who heard from his father, has always been that way without fail, and therefore with total confidence I can tell you that the sunrise tomorrow morning will be at 6.45 and sunset tomorrow evening at whatever time, etc. So the Rebbe said back to him, in that case we have exactly the same record. That come what may throughout the generations, whoever rose up against us, and here's the Pusik, and this is the greatest miracle on the planet, you should only know, that Goyim marvel at it. And then he added an amazing line. 
If you ask me about my own fate, I cannot answer you. But if you ask about the Jewish people as a nation, we will survive. Interesting? Based on one posik, on one word here, Vayikro Chavov Memdalad, Loim Asunagaltem, what's the word Nechalalsim? They will never be destroyed. Like it? Good one, but I want to show you an even better one, if it's possible. We go to Devorim now, back to Devorim, Lamed Aleph Chaf Aleph. Rebbe you will tell me when to finish. Whenever you feel it. Well, there's a bit more to come. It's not endless. It's not Devorim endless. Lamed Aleph? Devorim Lamed... Um, uh, uh, sorry. We're going to be a couple of people in your state. Great. Yourself and Rebbe Ruth and yeah. me. Me. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Lamed Aleph Chaf Aleph. Last one, turn the lights out, right? So Lamed Aleph, and then uh, he said Chof Aleph. Now Rabbi Sa'i, you know that besides being persecuted physically, typically talking of Hanukkah, we've been persecuted spiritually hardly less. We've had people coming from within our ranks and from outside our ranks who've been attacking the Torah, banning learning, banning learning Gemurah, banning learning anything, banning doing Kriya Sa Torah and the Yuvonim amongst them and what about Russia under the communists and many of them had unfortunately a measure of success. So there could be a fear that the Torah, the Gemurah, all the beautiful things that we cherish are going to be forgotten. Look at this promise in the same Chimish, which again, who on earth can make such a guarantee? Pusik Chav Aleph. Five zero eight. Page five zero eight. Page five zero eight. Five zero eight. Five zero eight. Please find it. That voice it makes all the difference when you see it inside. Five zero eight. It's Devarim Lamedal Pusik Chav Aleph. That we've had a lot of that in our history. Because this Torah will never ever be forgotten. There were times in our history when you couldn't blame somebody if they would have feared that Torah would be forgotten, particularly between 1939 and 1945. And it's unbelievable how people learn in those years and right away after those years and set up motors and yeshivas. And take a look at Williamsburg today and look at many other places in America and look at places in Europe still. You're even in Germany today, unbelievably. Even in Poland there are a few pockets of resistance. And of course Eretz Yisrael and many other far-flung places. And here's the one Rashi I would like to share with you, Rabbi Yisrael, on Pesach Chav Aleph. Haraizi Havtuche, here's your promise, Li Yisrael, Shaina Toyra Mishta the Torah will never ever be totally forgotten. Again, who on earth can make such a promise? Can anyone make such a promise? It's impossible. There you go. Now I've only got one or two more and then I'm sure one or two people may have questions and one or two might have to leave. I'd like to have married at some point, but if we either here or wherever, there's minyonim I'm sure to till success. Okay, a very different kind of approach. Lamed Dalet, let's turn on Pusik Vov. Now, a lot of things may not be known at this moment that we're sitting here, but they may become known with time. True? A lot of information may be made available. When it says, Ad Hayoyim Hazeh in the Torah, it means till whatever point you will read this verse. Correct? Okay, here we go. Look at Devorim Lamedal at page 519, Pusik Vov. Anybody done touring in Etis Ruhl? Anybody come across maybe the Kev of Moshe Rabbein? No. No living soul, right? You know, some people may have been up to the attic in Prague where the Goylem is supposed to have been hidden or the Yod and Isht. But nobody is fine. It says, Right? You want to hear an amazing thing? Okay, I'm showing you tonight only Psikim. Psikim and Chimish. But what about the Chazal? What about Chazal? Chazal say in a Pusik and Shia Shirim that the Koisal Marovi will never be destroyed. That was said about 2,000 years ago. Who lives around the Koisal Marovi today? And who lived there particularly between 1948 and 1967? Our best friends, yes? How many times could they have blown it up? And this is not a Pusik, it's the Chazal say that the Koisal Marovi will always stand. Isn't that amazing? So that means never mind the Psikim and Chimich. But the words that we hear from the Chachamim, 
It's rock solid. Who would dare make such a statement? Again, you could become transparent. Imagine one day they decided to bomb it. One day they decided to bring it down. It, whichever way to bulldoze it. And gone. No. But Koyesu Marovi, we're guaranteed. And here it is till this very minute. Friend, call your friends in Israel well. now. Or text them and make sure it's still there. Right? Okay. Now I just want to give you one other of a different nature. But it'll give you again a different slant. And do remember, Rabbi, so we're now in the middle of the story. Vayeshev, Mikaitz, Vayigash. The most exciting story in, in Sefer Bereshis. But that story is a very difficult story to digest. Maybe somewhat embarrassing. Oh, uh, the Shvotim are such great tzaddikim. Where they look what they get up to. What, they want to kill a brother? They want to sell him? They throw him into a pit with, with scorpions? That's a very nice thing to do, isn't it? Now, again, that's not the way you and I learn Chimish, but the outsider would see these stories. You know what? If our committee are putting this document together, either leave them out or doctor them up. Come on, be sensible. Why do you have to give the story with all the stark reality, right? No? Wouldn't that be more practical? Anybody would agree. Let me show you something. Moshe Rabbeinu was quite, quite some personality, was he? He's a good Jew, yeah, Moshe Rabbeinu? I don't think we've had anything, anything better since that time. We're waiting for Melech HaMashiach. It's the only one who can compete, right? Can I show you something? Let's turn Rabbi Sai right the end. And that is Lamed Beis Pusik Nin Aleph. Sorry, it's going back a tiny bit. Lamed Beis Pusik Nin Aleph, the end of Hazim. Now, what chet was it that prevented Moshe the Aaron getting into Eretz Yisrael and Moshe Rabbeinu's greatest wish from being fulfilled? The chet of Meim Meriva was is Shavudibartem and Asel and he hit it. Yeah. Now, already in Pasha Schikas, he gets criticized very severely for this, which is also embarrassing. Which, by the way, any other nation or religion would shelter, would shield their heroes from anything that might put them down a peg or two, would they not? They're not going to tell you embarrassing stories about the people they idolize. But isn't enough that we have Moshe Rabbeinu hammered in Pasha Srikas? Look at the end, the very end. You know what I would say? Give me a break. No, Moshe Rabbeinu is ready to come to the very end. And nevertheless, he's still criticized, right? He was criticized once already before. He himself wrote it. What? He was wrote it. He himself wrote it. Right. So, this is not the kind of account you're going to find in any other nation. The greatest man we've had, the greatest novi, the greatest teacher, the greatest leader, the greatest king, you name it. And here he gets criticized again at the very end. What does that tell us? It's true. Absolute, undiluting, uncompromised amis. The only way of understanding it. Now, I've this Tucker late already, and you've been very patient. But isn't it amazing? You just look at Psikim and Chimish, the right ones, and you can see for yourself there's only two ways of understanding this. Otherwise, either it's too ridiculous for words, or it's what you and I know it is. Absolute amis. And when we see that, of course, the attitude of the whole thing suddenly lights up, right? We feel the voice side, this is, this is uh, one of a kind. There is nothing like this anywhere. So we're very proud of it. And Hanukkah, Grad, I especially mentioned the Kosovo Marodi, which is a Drabonam. And I showed you this one sample, there are many, many, of Divrei Chazal, so you can see it's Taka True. Well, we've got his Taka True. All the other stuff is garbage, but if you want me to prove it, you will have to come again. Okay. I can't. Sorry? I can't resist some of the dash or something. Go ahead, Please ask. I'll tell everybody this is in a minute. Yeah. Should I show you another? It's about you personally. About? For you personally, where do you grow up? Where do you learn? How do you get the learning? Just I'll tell you afterwards because I don't want to keep everybody. No, but uh, it's, it's my, my real interesting. I will glad to tell you. Now, this um, MP3. I come now from Muncie, but for just a year we've been involved in the Animamin Foundation, which brings these messages and many more all over the place. And I have a Shutuf in Toronto, I won't say Shutuf, he does much more than I do. And, um, you know, I should really record this because... Um, so this is on behalf of the Animamin Foundation. So he's done a very special deal, my friend in Toronto. This only costs $26, you can have it for 5 
This should be a good few hours of lectures. Um, I should know, but I don't remember now by heart. It's ten lectures. So you've got about ten hours on here. Okay. Dama Shetoshi La'atzmecha. Know what to answer for yourself. The existence of the Creator and Torah Messina. So that would be yours for five dollars if you're interested. This is a book. You will find some of what you heard today in here. But that I can also do a special because this author of Shmuel Waldman is also part of our team. This you can also have for five dollars. It only costs much more. And the other items I brought will not cost you. This is a CD which just explains that we have a problem today, but it's a problem with a solution. The problem essentially, Rabbi Isai, is that you have probably never taught this stuff. No. And sometimes, unfortunately, when we ask these questions in a school, in a Thayda, in a Besiyata, whether it's a boy or a girl, they silence us, and it's very sad. And as a result, a lot of people are running around Yom Itahit, Nishm Itahit, but their minna isn't in the place. So that's what this CD is about. So if anybody's interested, they can take a copy. This won't cost you. This is just a little booklet about our work, what we do, explaining our aims, and a lot of testimonials from people like yourselves who've been to a, a class or a lecture of ours. This is not really related to it. It's a friend of mine. I don't know if you've heard of this, the Shmuz. He does it in Muncie and all over. It's like... Um, Excerpts from a book that's coming out now on Hanukkah. I think it's very good and I like to give it to people who are interested. Maybe you like the book and if, even if you don't have the book, you, and by the way, none of this is from my pocket. It's for the Animamin Foundation. This, this is yours to take. You know, if you do buy the book, fine. If you don't buy the book, it's also good. It's, it's a very thought-provoking, shall we say, essay. Right, so you'd like that, you can take as well, and you'd like, I assume, that you can take everything, everything the whole kit. You took it, you took the... And not only I took it, I'll do this. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Okay, so I should make your choice. If anybody would just like the, um, just like the things that don't cost, 